As we gather here at Trinity Lutheran Church in La Crosse, Wisconsin, we welcome those of you who are joining us by means of the radio. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. As you sit in the comfort of your home or wherever you are, we trust that like us, you will experience the presence of God in your life. As God comes to us, we will be reminded of whose we are, a child of God, because of Jesus Christ and also what we are to be about as his disciples, sharing the good news in word and deed. Our prayer is that you will be blessed by this time of worship with us. Welcome you to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church in La Crosse, Wisconsin, by means of the radio. We trust that God's presence will be a part of your life as we gather together, in which we'll be reminded that we are God's children and what we are to be about and who we are. I'm joined in worship today by three of my colleagues from congregations, sister congregations north of La Crosse, Pastor John Ashland from Hardy's Creek and South Beaver Creek, Adam Ahrens from North Beaver Creek, and Paul Sonnerud from the Blair Parish. They will be sharing in our worship today, and we're pleased to have them with us, as well as we assume that some of their people will be listening, and we welcome them to worship today also. call to worship. O God, our mouths are often full of lies and deceit. Our lips drip the poison of asp that would strike and destroy 
the happiness of others. The words, the words which, which proceed out, out of your, your mouth, mouth are, are gracious, O Lord. Lord. Not one of us is righteous, O God. We do not seek after you as surely as we seek after the things of the world. We hunger for bread and many things, but not for everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. The words, the words which, which proceed, proceed out of your, your mouth are gracious, O Lord. Lord. Our mouths are like open graves, O God. But you preach good news to the poor. You proclaim release to the captives. Your words bring sight and liberty. You proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The words words which which proceed proceed out of your mouth are gracious, O Lord. To whom shall we go, O Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Speak Speak to us us now now, that that we may hear hear again again the gracious words which which proceed from from your mouth. Lord Lord Jesus, you draw near us us, in in garb of human flesh, flesh, an earthly form to cheer us, to kindle faith afresh, your your body for us broken on the accursed tree, becomes becomes a sacred token of of glory yet yet to be. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also also with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. We'll take a moment of silence for reflection. Gracious God, have Have mercy mercy on us. us. We We confess confess that we have turned turned away from you, knowingly knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered wandered from your resurrection life. life. We We have have strayed from from your love for all people. people. Turn Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. 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 We join together in praying the prayer of the day. O O speak speak to us, us, dear dear Savior, Savior, your your true true and faithful faithful word. Proclaim Proclaim to us your favor. Let Let us be thus assured. assured. O word word made made flesh flesh forever, forever. your Your name name shall shall be adored. adored. O let let us cherish cherish ever the mouth of Christ our Lord. Lord.
with tears in his eyes. God looked down in time, saw him spat upon, rejected and mocked. Still he grew the tree that he Our first lesson this morning is from Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. This entire commandment that I command you today, must diligent, you must diligently observe, so that you may live and increase, and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, and then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 81. I heard a voice I had not known. With With great great compassion compassion speaks God's voice to those he holds most dear. I took the burdens from your backs. When you were in trouble, you called to me, and I saved you. Let Let all the faithful faithful now rejoice, God's God's words of love to hear. O Israel, if you would but listen to me, I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. With With great great compassion compassion speaks God's God's voice to to those he holds most dear. O that my people would listen to me. Then I would feed you with the finest of the wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Let Let all the faithful now rejoice, God's words of love to to hear. Our second reading this morning is from the 10th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news! But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. With great great compassion compassion speaks God's God's voice 
to to those he holds most dear. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have brought perfect praise, O Lord. Give us faith to praise you perfectly with our lips and love to praise you perfectly with our lives. Let Let all the faithful faithful now rejoice. rejoice. God's God's words of love love to hear. The Holy Gospel, according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues, and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from the risen Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, and the Spirit who walks with us on our journey of faith. Amen. The Gospel that was read was the first Speaking of Jesus as he begins his public ministry, it immediately follows the experience of the temptation in which one of the temptations was to change stones into bread. And Jesus replies to that, that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. He then went to Nazareth, his hometown, and to the synagogue and there was invited to address the people who were gathered there. And at that time, he announces the good news for for the poor, proclaims release for the captives, and says that God is about to act in a special way. The people in the synagogue were amazed at the words that came out of his mouth and were amazed at what he had to say and the good news that was there. It was a ministry that began with preaching and teaching and talking with people. I invite you to join with us as we listen to the words, some of the words that Jesus has spoken to the people as recorded in the scriptures. I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let the children come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall not hunger, and those who believe in me shall never thirst. I am the living bread, which came down from heaven. Those who eat of this bread will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. He said to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven. Rise and walk. He spoke to a storm. Peace, be still. And there was great calm. I am the door. Anyone who enters by me will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He said to a woman who was a sinner, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. If any thirst, let them come to me and drink. 
All who believe in me, as the scripture has said, out of their hearts shall flow rivers of living water. At the funeral procession, for the only son of a widow at Nain, he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall not die forever. He stood outside the tomb of Lazarus and cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages and his face wrapped with a cloth. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. These gracious words from the mouth of Christ truly show us that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Christ. These are words that proclaim God's love, God's grace, God's good news for each one of us, release from the captivity that we're held in, and announces that God continues to be at work in our lives to love us, and that we are unique and special to God. But the words of Christ that came from our mouth are not empty words. They were expressions that found their reality in his actions and in his deeds and what he did. These words also were words that were ultimately leading to his crucifixion. The mouth of Christ spoke lovingly, even from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. To the thief crucified beside him, he said, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Lovingly providing for the needs of his mother at the time of his death, he spoke to her, Behold your son. And to the disciple whom he loved, he said, Behold your mother. As he felt the pain of separation from God caused by our sin, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In order to fulfill the scripture, he said, I thirst. Then, perfectly completing his mission, he said, It is finished. And finally, showing and telling us not only how to live, but how to die, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Yet we rejoice, for the mouth of Christ was not silenced by death. At the resurrection, the words from his mouth were these, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And several appearances after his resurrection, the first words that came from his mouth addressed to the people he met was, Peace be with you. Jesus' words were special addressed to us that bring us a sense of comfort, a sense of being very appropriately called the children of God and addressed by him. And having received those words, we as his disciples are reminded that we in turn are called to share those words with others, to be the mouth of Christ, to speak the words of comfort to announce release to the captives, to bring assurance of God's grace and God's love to others in their life. I will invite each one of us as we are here to share an occasion in which we see a way in which we become the mouth of Christ to share the good news of God's love with others. Adam, maybe you can begin. Thank you. The mouth of Christ. This phrase brings with it a lot of weight, a lot of pressure. I'm a relatively new pastor as I was ordained just last summer, 
And when I hear the mouth of Christ, I think of the fact that as a pastor, part of my vow was to preach the gospel and interpret scripture. In some very real ways, I have been called and have made a vow to be the mouth of Christ for the people and community of North Beaver Creek Lutheran in Ettrick, where I serve. This, this vow can feel very overwhelming, especially in light of the fear and sadness and grief and death that we see on the news, that we hear from our friends and family, that we feel and experience around us. How am I? as the mouth of Christ, to respond to this pain and fear. What am I to say? Thankfully, I also believe that we do not do this life of faith alone. We hold the faith together, and together we hold the faith. Martin Luther called it the priesthood of all believers, that we all have a call and a witness to bear for Christ, the God who is with us. I'm not the only mouth for Christ, thankfully. And I also believe that God's voice hasn't gone completely silent since the books of the Bible were canonized. I really love the tagline that our siblings in in the United Church of Christ, the UCC, have been using. On UCC, UCC signs and churches across the country, it says, God is still speaking. God's word continues to be spoken by many mouths. And often we hear the good news when we least expect it. I opened up YouTube earlier this week and to post a song based on Psalm 46 to our church's Facebook page. But before I could get to that video, a new video popped up of one of my favorite musicians, Chris Thiele. He had recently posted a cover of a song written by another bluegrass musician, Gillian Welch. And this song hit me like a strong wind. It pushed me back in my chair and brought a tear to my eyes. Do you ever have a moment where a song hits you where you need to be hit? It was the good news I needed to hear. It's a song called Hard Times, and it tells the story of an old farmer who has an old mule. And he keeps farming, even though he can't afford a mechanical plow, he can't afford a tractor, he keeps farming with his old mule. As he plows, he sings, Hard times ain't gonna rule my mind. In the face of hardship and trouble and likely pain, he keeps singing. He admits that it's a mean old world, heavy in need. That big machine is just picking up speed. In the middle of a difficult world where some drink their tears and some drink wine, hard times won't rule his mind. In the last verse, the farmer's mule has died, and he seems to have forgotten his song. So the songwriter, the singer, pleads with all the listeners to pick up his song and sing again for him and for us all. Hard times ain't going to rule my mind. In the middle of hard times, in the middle of pain, in the middle of sickness and even death, as Christians, as the mouth of the voice of Christ, we proclaim that it is not the hard times that rule our minds. Through Christ, through our living God, there is hope in the sadness. There is new life out of death. There is resurrection. Our God in Christ proclaims loudly that hard times, the cross, don't rule our minds. Death does not rule our minds. Christ, the servant, through our hands, continues to feed the poor, to aid the sick, And through our voices, the mouth of Christ proclaims love to the unloved. The mouth of Christ still speaking through me and through you. Through an unexpected song at the right time, the mouth of Christ proclaims hope. Amen. I invite Pastor John Ashland to share his thoughts. Back in 1986... During my seminary days, I was an exchange student in West Germany. One day I received a letter from my parents telling me that one of my best friends had died in a terrible accident. He had been working at a youth Bible camp in Colorado and was struck by lightning and died instantly. The news was devastating, and at that time there was no way for me to go home for the funeral. I was alone in my grief, and I wondered how I was going to get through all of this. But in the midst of my sorrow and fear, God was at work. 
A classmate of mine was a Catholic priest from Scotland named Father Harry O'Brien. When I told him about my friend's death, he offered to have a prayer service for my friend. He sat me down in an empty classroom and prayed some prayers and then began to read from Matthew 11, verse 28, where Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Although this was more than 30 years ago, I can still feel the power and comfort of that word. In that moment, it was as if Christ himself was standing before me with outstretched arms, reaching to lift my burdens and carry my sorrows. These words from the mouth of Christ continue to resonate deeply in my soul today. Right now, because of this coronavirus crisis, all of us are carrying heavy burdens. We're carrying heavy fears and anxieties, not knowing what the future holds. Will my family be safe? Will I stay healthy? Will we have enough money to get by? And perhaps most relevant today, how long will this last? But it is in the midst of our weariness, fears, and worries that Jesus says to each one of us, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. No matter what burdens you are carrying today, Christ promises to help you carry your burdens, your worries, and your fears. Many times in my life, like the time when my friend died, I have turned to Christ and asked him to help me to carry those things that have become too heavy for me to carry alone. We can take great comfort in knowing that we have a friend in Jesus, the one who died on the cross for our sins, because he has promised us that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. He can help us through all of life's many dangers, toils, and snares. In him, we can find rest for our souls and a peace that is beyond human understanding. In closing, when we are with others who are struggling, either because of this coronavirus crisis or other burdens and troubles too heavy to carry, we can also serve as the mouth of Christ and remind them that there is someone who can help us in time of need. Today, God's word continues to speak powerfully to us these words of Christ from Matthew eleven twenty eight: Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. Turn it over to Vicar Paul Sonrud from the Blair Lutheran Parish. Words have power. They have the power to heal, to forgive, to bring peace or joy, to grow in love, to cultivate patience and kindness. Jesus knew this. He chose words to heal, to forgive, to bring peace and love, to comfort, to reflect his patience and kindness. Every word he spoke was for the purpose of showing people that they were loved and they were valued. Jesus also said, follow me. Do what I do. Observe what I do and say and go and do likewise. Every, to use every word of ours to heal, forgive, comfort, bring peace and joy, or reflect kindness and patience. Words have power. They have the power to heal. They have the power to forgive, to bring comfort, to reflect patience and kindness. They can also be licentious. They can be used to demean, to cause strife or anger or quarrels or to cut, hurt, or wound, to create factions and dissensions. Which do your words create? In Matthew 15, Jesus says, But those things which come out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the person speaking. The words we choose to use reflect the state of our heart. So the words we choose to use not only can either be life-giving or hurtful, they also reflect on us and to us what the real state of our heart is. 
Listen to the words you hear now from your neighbors, your friends, from the television. Are they the words that Jesus used to build up, to comfort, to heal, and forgive? Or are they words that defile the speaker, showing that their heart is black with hate, bent on creating strife, stinginess, anger, or hurt? Listen to the words that come out of your mouth. Are they the words that Jesus used? Or do they hurt others and defile you? Count your words every day. How many of them are life-giving, offering comfort, healing, forgiveness? How many of them do not? We do not live by bread alone. We live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The gracious words of Christ truly show we live not by bread alone. Words are not empty. They are expressions of love in deed and in truth. They are expressions of what is in our heart and who is in our heart. We receive from the mouth of Christ gracious words that give us salvation. We receive from the mouth of Christ words of strength and comfort for these uncertain times. May the words of our mouths Extend the strength and comfort that comes to us from Jesus to all of those around us in need. As I was reflecting on the mouth of Christ and thinking about his ministry, I was struck by the number of times that Jesus spoke to and addressed a person that somebody else might choose to ignore or choose to hope would pass them by. Like the woman at the well in Samaria, like the woman caught in adultery, like the lepers, all of those are people that others didn't want to have a conversation with. And yet Jesus took time to have that conversation. What struck me was that then I was called and each one of us are called to share those same words with people that we may typically not pay much attention to or want to put on the back burner. And I was reminded of the homeless people. I drive by on a highway that has a sign that has on it the reminder of the homeless vets and asking us to call, people like that. On Tuesday of this week, I spent uh, three or four hours on the telephone calling members of our parish who are home, maybe because they're elderly and need to stay home or are members of assisted living. And the conversations that I had with them had three parts. The first one was to say for the telephone call and to tell us to me that they were doing very well and it was going well. The second had to do with they were learning to adjust to a whole new situation, a circumstance in which they couldn't talk to their kids but they could talk to them as they stood on a balcony and the kids were down below, or something was delivered to the front door, picked up by a person who worked at the place and carried to their front door, and then they got a telephone call saying they could pick it up, adjusting to that, but also hearing that they really appreciated the radio broadcast that we have. It was a way for them to remain connected to Trinity and a part of God's people. And I reminded them that we would continue to remember them in our prayers and to bless them, and they said back to us. As Jesus completed his ministry here on earth and returned to the Father, he entrusted into the care of the disciples of his day the continuation of his ministry. And so that same ministry is entrusted into our care. And it is our privilege and our responsibility as disciples today to be the mouth of Christ and in so doing, 
to share words that affirm, share words that encourage, share words that correct, share words that challenge, share words that affirm that they are a child of God, share words that says that God is pleased with them and lifting them up. It is that privilege and responsibility that comes to each one of us individually and all of us collectively to be the mouth of Christ in our world today. And so it is our privilege to join in singing with Trina that wonderful favorite old-time hymn called I Love to Tell the Story. So join with her. It's hymn number 661. Pray for the whole body of Christ and for all people according to their needs.
We pray for all nations of the world that their leaders may proclaim justice to all the citizens of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak the word, and and it shall shall be. be. We pray for your body, the church, that the words of your mouth may strengthen us to proclaim your love to all in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak speak the word, and it shall be. We pray for our congregations, that by our lips and through our deeds, we may show your love in welcoming new members into the body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak speak the the word, word, and it it shall be. be. We pray for the sick, those that we name silently before you, that you would bring your mouth near to them to breathe your Holy Spirit into them, bringing them health and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak speak the the word, word, and and it it shall shall be. be. We pray that in the midst of a confusing and perplexing time, your mouth would send forth a word of assurance and of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak speak the the word, word, and it it shall be. We pray for those who are alone, that through others' words, they would have the assurance that they are a part of your family and loved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, speak speak the the word, word, and and it it shall shall be. be. Into your care, O Lord, we entrust all for whom we pray, believing in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. to remind the people of Trinity Lutheran Church that we will continue to worship by means of the radio and all church meetings and all church activities are canceled until further notice. That includes our Monday meals as well as the From the Heart clothes cl- or, uh, from the heart food pantry. That is closed as well as the clothes closet and JC's, toes, to- JC's toy box. If you have an emergency need, if you call the church office, we will respond to it as quickly as we can. 
That is also true for pastoral calls or concerns. Please call the per- parish office and we will respond. I would remind you that English Lutheran will live stream its 1045 worship service, which is therefore another opportunity for you to worship. I likewise want to announce for the people of North Beaver Creek that our uh, all activities, including worship, will be canceled until further notice, at least until April 24th. Um, and likewise, take advantage of all the online opportunities to worship, including uh, Facebook Live on our Facebook page with me. Uh, but please tune into this radio broadcast and other opportunities that you find online to worship with people. If you uh, can, please remember to send in your offering to our office to keep the ministry of our church and our community continuing. Okay. I would also like to announce that for Hardy's Creek and South Beaver Creek Lutheran Churches of Ettrick, all worship services and meetings are also canceled until further notice, probably until at least April 24th, and then we'll go from there and see how it's going. As Adam said, I'll encourage everyone to please remember your offerings in the meantime, and then also watch for further updates on email, Facebook, letters sent out, and other ways of communicating. Uh, And for Blair Lutheran Church, a reminder also that all of our activities are canceled at the church, uh, except uh, we are continuing the food pantry, which has been increased from every two weeks to every week. And so the food pantry will be open from 4 to 6 p.m. every Thursday for, uh, for at least the foreseeable future. So if you are in need or if you hear of somebody who is in need, please avail yourself of that as you can. There's, uh, we have a, uh, it's kind of a new protocol for how to, how to pick up the food, uh, but it will work pretty slick. Uh, also a reminder that uh, as you uh, are able to, I encourage you to find a digital buddy, somebody with whom you can share uh, the Facebook posts that are going up, uh, because we will be uh, broadcast, not only are we on this broadcast, but we will be putting things up on our Facebook page, uh, which will be reflections on Wednesdays and Sundays, but also uh, there is morning and evening prayers, as well as some other uh, bits of information to keep us all connected as a community. Receive the benediction. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen.
want to praise the wonders of your mighty Go in peace, share the good news, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our time with you who have joined in worship by means of the radio is coming to an end. We thank you for your participation and invite you to join us again next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. As we leave, our prayer is that you will know the continuing presence of our God with you to guide you, protect you, and support you in your activities this coming week. Go in God's peace and joy to serve the Lord.